Good morning, folks. We've got no less than six top stories linked for you today. Doesn't even include the solar eruption, weather, or the earthquake watch. Let's get started over at spaceweathernews.com. Finding the last 24 hours on our star seemingly silent, we do notice that small coronal hole noted yesterday is becoming much more visible here. Now, there was indeed an eruptive event. Plasma filament arching over the south polar crown destabilized, snapped off small bits of plasma southward in the solar system, and retracted back the rest for more fun later. Let's go to the solar wind. It is quiet, but we're not here for the kinetics. We're here for the magnetism. Phi angle in blue is like your solar wind crystal ball. The return of IMF flow from sun to earth in the last few hours indicates that we are taking the coronal hole outgoing fields. That means we've got another earthquake watch coming up. Been a bit since we heard that, but the next uptick should be at hand. With that coronal hole turning through at such a small size, it may not move the solar wind much, however. Just west of Brisbane, the hailstorms continue down under. Fun spring so far. But the bigger hail event to report hit Saudi Arabia. Hail and flood water at Shin to knee height throughout the metro region. And this comes as the last of the seasonal precipitation in the eastern world shifted way too far to the west, leaving large swaths of India in drought. With 70% of their expected rains in the season, it's not a cataclysmic year. Still a brutal pain on nearly the entire population, especially the workers and the animals. Let's go next to the remnants of Willa. Hopefully you caught last night's eyewall lightning video from this former hurricane. As the phoenix rises from the ashes, so will this storm. Never to its former greatness, but enough to drive a solid snow event as it races up the east coast. Super Typhoon Yutu just raked the Mariana Islands region, and for the next few hours, we may not get many reports. Meanwhile, the system now has a realistic model track days ahead, and it is the Philippines on deck to see it next. Let's use the ESO to kick off science news as we zoom out to the Skull and Crossbones Nebula. While the namesake organization on Earth invokes thoughts of stuck-up spoiled trust fund babies, the cosmic wonder really comes alive when you zoom in far enough to see the detail. Enough aesthetics, let's go to the data. New product from Copernicus is the formaldehyde mapping. This adds to their suite of particle detection capabilities and broadens the scope of our understanding what's in the air. Moving on to the largest collisions in the universe, whether you like black holes, plasmoids, or just the active galactic nucleus name, their observations and first evidence of such powerful objects in Congress reminds us that the details of conclusions may be questioned, but we have to follow through with real observations of the heavens. One way we can get to the outer rim of the solar system and see more is through the Pluto-Charon system. In a new study, they showed how the Pluto and Charon interaction could use slingshot motion to get a spacecraft out of that small grouping with no fuel, and how that could be used to get home or get out to other, further Kuiper Belt objects, again, just using the power of the small Pluto moon system. Up next, cosmic rays. As you hopefully remember, when both Mexico City and Greenland demonstrated a new record high in cosmic rays, we declared the modern cosmic ray maximum to have begun. Indeed, it looks like Dr. Phillips, Earth to Sky Calculus student scientist group is crushing it once again in the United States. Every one of their monitoring programs is showing the rise in cosmic rays as we descend into solar minimum and Earth's magnetic field continues weakening during its ongoing reversal. Speaking of which, Interesting paper out on Archive last night modeling the Earth's field as a function of the oceans, not the core, and says that this helps explain why the magnetic reversals in geologic history appear to immediately precede mass extinction events. Much more on these topics at our upcoming conference in February. Top professors and researchers in the AWAIT community gather in the high desert. Won't you join us? Folks, I want to share a couple photos from the premiere reading of Kira and Lulu Visit the Planets, Book will be available for the holidays, but the kids got a sneak peek at the second episode in the Kira and Lulu series. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4.20 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.